Hello, I'm Nicole Johnson. Welcome to this special report on embryo adoption. There's one thing that every one of us has in common. Before we were born, before we were a developing fetus, we were an embryo. The genetic blueprint of our existence was contained in a tiny cluster of cells. Meet Sammy. He may not look like much yet to you and me, but Sammy represents the fulfillment of a longing and the shared hope of two families. In these tiny cells, Sammy's genetic blueprint for development already exists. His gender, skin tone, hair, height, and even eye color have already been determined. Meet Sammy's parents, Kurt and Robin of Ohio, and Keith and Amy of Arizona. Their shared hope really began as shared pain, the anguish of infertility. Here's news correspondent Leslie Layton. Can you tell me how infertility affected you? Well, I know for myself it was something I never expected. I just assumed that we would have children. It was this black cloud <laughs> over us that we just didn't know what the next step was. We didn't know, is this ever going to end? Will we always be in this state of, of longing? And it was very, very difficult. Probably one of the hardest things I've ever had to go through. Like many others, the Hawks look to in vitro fertilization as their solution. What happened to your embryos after you became pregnant? The way the process works is that they take uh, more, uh, you know, create more embryos than are needed. Uh, we were fortunate enough to uh, get pregnant on the first try, so they were frozen, you know, at that, at that time. Today, there are over 250,000 embryos in storage at clinics across the country. After only 30 days, Sammy has already grown 10,000 times larger than the original fertilized egg. His heart is pumping blood. We can now see his arms, legs, eyes, and ears. Embryo donation is sharing the hope of parenthood by gifting embryos in storage to an infertile couple. Embryo adoption is receiving those donated embryos and giving them a chance to be born. Embryo donation can be done anonymously or as an open adoption with the genetic parent and the adopting parent both having the opportunity to choose each other. When we found this program on the internet for that we could adopt um, donated embryos, that was just like a light went off. We, we just knew right then. I, I remember printing it out and running in. You know, Amy was in the room and we're like, you've got to see what I found. You know, there's actually this program that you know, people donate embryos through. And, we could do this. Being able to conceive was pretty much out of the question, but being able to carry a child um, was definitely possible. So that was exciting for us that we could actually have this experience and you know, have, have this child from the very beginning. Sammy's now eight weeks old. We can see fingers on his hand. He responds to touch and brain waves can be detected and recorded. His stomach is producing digestive juices and his kidneys and his liver have begun to function. We wanted the opportunity for the embryos to be born or give them the opportunity to be born and this, uh, uh, the adoption process would allow that to happen. And I think from my perspective, um, doing it this way, you could know or almost you could help pick the family that they would go to instead of it being um, an anonymous process. It can be a known process that you actually have an input into where they go, what happens to them, and um, know if the people who got them, if they ended up having a baby and if it was a boy or a girl and even having contact. I remember when we were chosen, I was so overwhelmed with this gift that they had given us. It's overwhelming. I had, there is no way to express gratitude in words. There just, there just isn't. Our little Sammy is 13 weeks. We're surprised to learn this baby we've been calling Sammy is actually Samantha. We can see now that she is indeed a girl. Hair has begun to grow on her head. She can wrinkle her forehead, swallow, and even squint. You know, the last thing we want to happen for the baby is that at some point in her life she would say, was I rejected by my right. genetic parents? 
-hmm. So one of the things we like about having contact is that if that ever comes to pass, we can be involved and assure her that no, you know, we can explain the situation that it was you know, maybe just a, the best solution for a, a hard situation to handle, and that it wasn't a case of rejecting her. And in fact, uh, you know, we would welcome her to come and visit with, with us and with our kids if she has interest when she's older. And you know, many people have asked us, you know, why didn't we choose? donor eggs because at least we could have some of our genetics, you know, Keith's genetics as part of our child. And I tell them, you know, never once in my pregnancy did I think, you know, wow, this is so wonderful, but man, it would have been so much better if she had our genetics. You know, yeah. I never, that never entered my mind. Samantha is now nine months. Amazingly, her little heart is pumping around 250 gallons of blood every day. She's now ready to live outside of her mother's womb. When Samantha was born, what, it was just an amazing day. I, and I remember, like Amy said, you know, this is our child being born. And uh, the issues of that she was not genetically related just really paled, I think. and. Um, you know, when we look at her now, she's our daughter, and she is a gift given to us by people we didn't even know, <laughs> and that was amazing. We would highly recommend it, it uh, for a couple of reasons. One, it honors life, that rather than seeing these embryos destroyed, it gives the embryos a chance to be born. And in our experience, it's a very rewarding time that uh, to see an infertile couple have a baby, uh, and you know, be able to enjoy that child and parenthood, it's, it's a great thing to be a part of. Today, the opportunity exists for many other couples to share the joy of parenthood through embryo donation. With such a vast supply of embryos in storage, we wondered why more people aren't considering it. It's a new concept. There are new innovations in IVF every day, and this is one of the things that have occurred in the last few years. As many people hear about this program, they're surprised. They're saying, why haven't I heard about this before? Well, it's just taking a matter of time to let the world know that this is an option for them. People just aren't really aware that that opportunity exists. We need to be better about educating patients about the availability of frozen thought embryos. I think it's important that we increase the public awareness of embryo adoption agencies. Uh, a lot of people don't know that there are other viable options for what to do with their leftover embryos. And being able to offer the embryo to an adoptive couple is a great way, a great hope to give that other couple a chance for pregnancy. What are the risks involved in embryo adoption? The risks of embryo adoption are um, maybe the embryos might not survive the thaws. We talked earlier, there's about a 50 to 70 percent success rate surviving the freeze and the thaw. So people could be disappointed on occasion that either none or, or a smaller number than they would like to survive. Um, there's also the chance of not getting pregnant. And again, I mentioned the pregnancy rate is between 35, 40 percent. And so there's some disappointment when pregnancy isn't achieved. So it's important to be realistic about that. Also, once a patient's pregnant, there's all the, the other, you know, we can't make the complications of pregnancy go away. Um, the, the same complications exist, which are, which are frequently also age-related. Um, and those are probably the biggest issues. One of the concerns of parents considering embryo donation and adoption is whether or not it's legal. To answer that question, we spoke to adoption attorney Ron Stoddart. It is not illegal in any state to transfer embryos from one family to another. But this is another area where the law has not kept pace with medical technology. The key is that there has to be a written document that clearly expresses the intention of the families. In the case of embryo adoption, that written document would typically include language covering the future contact between the families. In some states, such as Florida, Louisiana, North Dakota, Oklahoma, Texas, and Virginia, laws have been passed which may have some bearing on adoption agreements. To find out more about current laws, visit www.embryoadoption.org. Accessing information is now easier than ever through websites like this, brochures, and educational videos. You can now easily explore all of your options. What would you say to families who have embryos in storage right now? 
about how being the recipient of embryos has affected you? It, you can't put it into words. Um, I cannot believe that my wife here has a, a little baby inside of her. It just it hasn't hit. I never thought about this baby's not mine or not genetically related or anything like that. I mean, it's always been, you know, um, that this is our baby. We couldn't have become parents through this process without a couple that was open to placing their embryos. And we are so thankful, you know, to our genetic family. <laughs> The one thing I would want to say to our genetic family is thank you. Thank you for the joy of being a mom. Thank you for the joy of feeling my children grow inside of me. Um, thank you for caring enough about them to let me continue and grow them. Grow what you started. I love you. Looking at egg donor, we would still end up creating more embryos possibly and then we ended up freezing those embryos if we ended up with children and um, that was one thing that she felt strongly about is why create more embryos knowing that there's so many out there that are frozen that need a home and when we knew that we could still uh, go through the, the birthing process and think those are the things that I you know growing, growing up as a child thinking that you're going to get married and have children it just seems like the standard um, uh, the standard dream that everybody has and then when you find out that you possibly can't do that and this gives you that option still. I think this is going to grow um, exponentially. I think you know the more people that learn about it, the more people they're going to want to do it. And it's just so exciting to, from a year ago to be saying I can't have kids and you know a year later here I am pregnant and um, that's you know the best feeling in the world. It's hard to look at a photograph of four embryos knowing that two of them are now playing in your house and just summarily discarding the other two. It's inconsistent in my mind. There was a tremendous emotional inconsistency between the time and effort and life change that you go through to go through IVF or an assistive reproductive technique to create this possibility and then going 180 degrees the other direction and saying, I don't want these embryos. It took months, months of thinking, praying, talking it out. I cried a lot. Could I really, what if I got pregnant with twins again? There are families with two sets of twins. I work mm -hmm. full time. Um, we ha are the age that we are financially, emotionally. How could we do it? And it just became, I felt like I was in a circle and I couldn't get out. I couldn't have these babies and I couldn't give them away. I couldn't, I couldn't just let them go away. Um, I had to do something that made sense. And embryo donation was, as we came through all of that, the thing that, that made a lot of sense. I helped create these children. I'm the one that chose, yes, I'm willing to do in vitro. And as a result, there's 13 embryos. And um, there's just a lot of responsibility there. And I just, you know, would want everybody to remember what a blessing the children are and what a gift they are. And to be able to give that to another family who obviously is going to love these children because they want them badly and have been trying for them. And it's just awesome. It's phenomenal. If you or someone you care about is faced with the decision of what to do with their embryos and would like more information about embryo donation, or if you have a desire to start or expand your family through embryo adoption, visit www.embryoadoption.org. Thank you for joining us, and please share the hope of embryo donation and adoption with those you love.